Now, in the past, training in the nature of mind has been done on the level of abstraction, meaning that uh, philosophical levels of abstraction have been applied to understanding the nature of mind. What we decided to do, due to our background, not only in the philosophy of mind, but in computer science and information theory and mathematics, was to apply other ways of explaining the nature of mind, detailed levels of explanation and detailed levels of organization uh, called algorithms that would always lead to a specific result. And the more we explored the cosmology of what the mind might actually be, the more we could see through our own direct experience of the mind is that the mind is a vast frontier. It is an open intelligence, pure and illuminated, like a cloudless sky that is inexhaustible outshining all data, and that this is the fuel of our own mind. Our own mind does not have an independent nature. There never has been proof of mind in a human being. No scientist or scientific team has ever proven that there is a mind located somewhere in a human being and found that location. I see some people smiling here who are among those scientists because they know it's true too. And so this is, has been one of the great puzzles. We have lived for a long time now, hundreds of years, under the onus, you could say, of biological determinism. We are biological entities. We have an independent nature. We're somehow separate from each other and separate from um, objects and separate from the world. However, in open intelligence, everything is indivisible. Everything is spontaneously present and everything is entirely open. All of the data that stream in open intelligence are the dynamic energy of open intelligence. They're the dynamic energy of open intelligence and nothing else. The meaning we give them is what causes us trouble. Indulge, giving them a label and then indulging, avoiding, or replacing them. All of this, we, we spend our times like robots trying to sort all of our data, giving it labels, trying to connect it together to see how it brings together some kind of meaning for us in our life. However, by simply relying on open intelligence, which you've already been introduced to, and allowing everything to be as it is without getting into all these antidotes and countermeasures and curative fantasies, then open intelligence becomes more and more predominant. Instead of the data and all the fix-it plans for data, open intelligence becomes more obvious. And this is really, really key. It's absolutely key, leaving everything as it is. Now, it may sound totally contradictory and paradoxical to the way we live today, but, you know, we are not biologically determined. We are determined by open intelligence. We have no nature independent of open intelligence. So it is open intelligence upon which we rely. Open intelligence is our actual body, <coughs> mind, source of voice, speech, qualities, and activities. <coughs> open intelligence. So biological determination in and of itself of a human being is a very small space to live from. And this is why it is very important for each person to determine through their own experience what their mind is, what the nature of their mind is. 
Now, uh, in Balanced View, we have considered this so important and so ur urgent that we consider it to be the most important of all educational topics. It is the educational and the evolutionary imperative of the day. It is the education that must come before everything else. Uh, open intelligence itself is spontaneously beneficial to all. Benefit does not need to be cultivated. Altruism does not need to be cultivated. Discernment and insight, the correct solution to each time, place, and circumstance is there. Spontaneous, always on, always present. And so you see what starts out as, as somewhat contradictory, it, it's important to remind ourselves in that first moment of introduction to the nature of mind, that that moment of introduction to the nature of mind is utterly beneficial. So that shows us what the nature of mind is. The nature of open intelligence is utterly beneficial. Utterly beneficial. When we leave everything as it is, rather than trying to corral it into indulgence, avoidance, or replacement, what occurs is that all the labels of our data are outshone. A great outshining occurs, and in this great outshining is illuminated the most comprehensive intelligence a human being has. And so when Johan mentioned earlier that we as individuals hold the knowledge of the universe in a usable way, that is absolutely right on and correct. If we have the mind to do so, an open and expansive mind, we can look back two million years and see what a supernova did that exploded in space. We can examine its nuances and know everything about it. In science today, it is really of, of crucial importance that science be for the sake of the benefit of all rather than science for the sake of science. Science for the sake of new scientific discovery or science and technology for the sake of making money. We have reached that point where we as a species must call upon what is most exalted and flawless in ourselves. And what is most exalted and flawless is our beneficial potency. We were not born as damaged goods as we have been taught. We were born as open intelligence. Everything else was learned from there. Everything else we trained ourselves in from there. It's much easier to train up in open intelligence than it is to train up in all these other ideas about managing data. Recognition beyond relaxation is discovering human nature for the first time, discovering human identity for the first time coming to terms with the reality, this is reality, coming to terms with reality, aligning with reality, that our actual body is open intelligence. Whether we have this physical body or not, open intelligence is. Our role as intelligent agents of open intelligence is entirely interactive with all in intelligent agency everywhere. And so you see, it's no, there's no need to try to take all this in at once. Most important is in your own direct experience, examine the nature of your mind for yourself. Examine the nature of your mind for yourself. And moment by moment, this introduction, this potent, symbolic and non-symbolic transmission that is occurring here will become more and more powerful in your life. There are no pitfalls in this transmission or communication. No pitfalls. 
There's no going along at a certain level and then dropping back down into intensive labeling of data. Greater and greater increase of inexhaustible beneficial potency.